This is the second section, modulus of an argument of argand diagrams, chapter two, the core, one book. And we look at something called the modulus and argument of a complex number. Now, basically, the modulus is the size of the complex number. OK, that's basically how far the complex number is from the origin. So distance from origin. And the origin is the point 0 plus 0 i. So if we can find that distance, that's the uh, modulus. And we can find distances easy between coordinates by using Pythagoras. And the argument, okay, it's not what you do when you disagree with your teacher. The argument is the angle measured in radians, and we'll talk about that in a moment, measured in radians uh, measured from the positive real axis positive real axis right okay so let's draw what we're actually talking about here so here's a coordinate grid like this here's a complex number drawn not coordinate grid not an argon diagram so the length of that complex number that's the modulus here modulus the angle, well, the way that we measure the angle, we measure it from here. So this is like zero, zero radians. So we don't use degrees, we use something called radians. And we measure around this way. And we measure around this way, depending on whether the complex number is at the top or the bottom. So we, we can measure around in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, depending on where the complex number is. Now there's a little diagram up here. So for example, if my complex number was here or around here, then um, my um, angle would be a positive one. Yeah, if we measure around the top. So these would have like a positive argument. Whereas if it was a complex number down here or around here, this would have a negative argument. Yeah, as we go around the bottom, it will have a negative argument. So what about this thing, radians? So with degrees, we know that um, a full turn is 360 degrees. Degrees, 360 degrees equals full turn. Now you'll do more detail of this in your uh, normal maths lessons. I just want to in, do a brief introduction to it. Um, and but in radians, two pi and a little c to show that we're doing radians, not degrees, is a full term. Now that means we can easily work out some other related angles. So, so you could say three hundred and sixty degrees is equivalent to 2 pi, full turn. 180 degrees, a half turn, straight line, is going to be pi. Uh, 90 degrees will be pi over 2. Uh, 60 degrees, well, that's 180 divided by 3. That's pi over 3, a third pi. 45 degrees would be pi over 4. 30 degrees would be pi over 6, and so on. Yeah, so we can write lots of angles like this exactly in terms of uh, pi. Now, when we work out this angle, this argument, um, there is a rule about whether um, the size of it. Now, when we go around the top here, let's get the highlight. And when we go around the top here, yeah, that means that we can have an argument that's anywhere 
between um, 0 to pi around the top yeah so if it's round here this would be actually be an argument of pi now when we go around the bottom when we go around here yeah actually um when we get to uh, this line over here this one it's always pi so we don't call this one negative pi so around the bottom any angle around there um, can go to zero all the way up to but not including negative pi so i should say um, greater than so it doesn't include pi actually it might be better if i say it doesn't include negative pi okay uh, up to but not including negative pi yeah because uh, the one that's over this left hand side over here it can't be pi and negative pi so we say right well, it's pi not negative pi and you want to be able to work out radians on your calculator so anytime you're doing a trig calculation and you want to do a trig calculation in radians okay the way that you do it uh, on your calculator once it's switched on if you do shift and menu so you press the shift button and menu uh, or it actually said yeah or setup menu then you get setup and then angle unit is option number two so you choose number two and then it says degree radian gradient so you choose number two and that will put your calculator in radians mode now remember it's in radians mode because in your normal math lessons when you do there's a chapter on triangle sine rule cosine rule uh, area of a triangle half a b sine c you'll need to switch your calculator back to uh, degrees and the way that you do that is that when you get to this last box here you just choose option one instead and that will take you to degrees back to degrees mode so you will need to flip between the two okay so we've got z equals two plus r seven i and in part a we want to find the modulus of z of z now you may see it written like this two bars either side of z it means the same thing yeah now always draw a diagram like i said always draw a diagram or an argon diagram yeah really important don't just try and do it now diagram so here's my axis with an imaginary uh two across seven up so my complex number is that so the modulus is the length of that arrow which happens to be the um hypotenuse of a right angle triangle with sides two and seven so all i need to do is say that the modulus z equals the square root of 2 squared plus 7 squared which is 4 plus 49 which is 53 okay so i can leave it like that i'll leave it as a third i won't change it part b the argument is this angle here the angle from here remember this is zero like our zero point so that's the angle we want to find again because it's a right angle triangle and I'll draw it here like this it's going to be trigonometry I'm trying to find this angle here this is 2 this is 7 we have hypotenuse opposite adjacent so uh, the tan of that angle is equal to the opposite 
over the adjacent. So the tan inverse of 7 over 2 will give me the angle. So let's do that. Uh, making sure your calculator is in radians mode. So really important. Radians mode, otherwise you're going to get wrong answers. So diagrams, radians mode for this. Uh, and that's going to be uh, tan inverse 7 over 2. And it says to two decimal places 1.29 radians. So little c there to show that the answer is in radians. Now, the way that we show the argument, we can say arg with the complex number. There. So this means the argument of Z. So I could write that as 1.29 there and 2 dp. We normally go to three significant figures for our answers. A different complex number. So modulus of Z, remember, that basically means this. I'm going to find the modulus of Z. Again, a diagram. We know it's going to be Pythagoras. We know it's going to be tan inverse. But it's really important to get that diagram. So negative 4 across and minus 1 down. So my complex number goes down here. So the length of that is going to be my argument, sorry, my um, modulus. So if I draw a little triangle like that, then uh, this side is 4, this side is 1. So modulus of Z is going to equal the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 17. So we'll just leave it like that. Now in um, part B, this is the power of having a diagram. The argument is actually this angle here, all of this. Yeah, so I'm going to work out this angle here, this bit, and then I'm going to add uh, this bit to it. And that bit in green is like 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. So whatever I get for the argument or whatever I get for that angle that I've highlighted in red, I'm going to add pi over 2. Now, if you didn't have a diagram, you wouldn't know that. Yeah, and also because it goes around this way, I know that my argument needs to be written as a negative number. So let me just draw the triangle out like this. Um, and this is the angle we're trying to find. Um, and this side is 1, this side is 4. So that angle is going to be the tan inverse of the opposite over the adjacent. So basically the tan inverse of four. So that's 1.3258 like that. And then the argument of said is going to be pi plus that or pi over two plus that. Well, that'll be the positive argument. Okay, so I'm just going to add pi over 2, and I get uh, 2.8966. Uh, but because I can see it's going around the bottom, the argument of Z is going to be negative. Without the diagram, you wouldn't necessarily know that. And to two decimal places, that's going to be 2.90, so negative 2.90 radians. Okay, now there is another way you could do it. You could, if you wanted to, instead work out this angle here. Yeah, see this one here? You could work out that, but you do the tan inverse of 1 over 4 to find that, and then do pi minus your answer so all of that's pi so if you do pi minus this that will give you this bit 
and then put a negative sign in front you still get the same answer so I've shown one way of doing it yeah which I worked out this added pi over 2 I could equally have worked out this angle and done pi minus that to get this angle here that's highlighted in purple right you should now be able to do exercise 2b on pages 21 to 23